it's in green trying to keep it on the center line and we're at rotation and we will climb out at VY which is about 72 there we go flaps out of here all right so we'll keep our climb going here up until 600 feet and where's tower we need to be able to talk to tower Awesome. New Bern Tower Cessna 7 Tree Tree Uniform Foxtrot continue for south departure. Get out of here. Alright, we are at 600. So I'm going to go ahead and start my bank, but keep the climb going. And. next uh, frequency that we program in is going to be cherry point approach that would be 119.35 or 119.35 they will give me a confirmation and frequency change approved though before i make that change and we've climbed past pattern altitude airspeed is looking good and instruments are good wonderful let's see what message we got here okay thanks let's clear that message thank you okay Oh, great. My glitch just came back. Oh, and power's back, and it's gone. Well, folks, this would be a bit of an in-flight emergency. So, in the event that this occurred, that's why you always... Right? That's why you always want to have backups of basically everything, and I always print out a flight plan. So, in real life, I would refer to my paper sheets... But the difficulty that we have now is that we have an electronic failure um, that's not affecting the function of the airplane. It is going to affect our ability to speak to anybody, which means that we cannot enter controlled airspace because we can't establish two-way communication with the tower. So we will need to fly to an uncontrolled or Class G aircraft in order to land and cherry point is not it also i don't feel like having people in the military run out with guns so cherry points would pr probably be expecting me to communicate to them at this time if my transponder would work i would um uh squawk the um 7600 for a radio failure but i don't even appear to have a working transponder which means I'm actually not going to get anywhere near Cherry Point because I don't feel like getting hit with a surface-to-air missile. However, I probably can still fly to my intended destination of Dead Cow Field, and we're just gonna let's see. Did that fix it? Yeah, didn't hear your last transmission. But there we go. Alright, so we're going to contact Cherry Point Approach. We're going to request flight following. Request flight following. Seven two five one. Squawk seven two five one. Squawk seven two five one. Cessna tree uniform foxtrot. Seven two five one. Uniform foxtrot radar contact four miles northwest of six two. Sweet, and I'm at my flight altitude. 
Okay. And I would Roger confirm... You yeah, don't just say Roger. You say altitude uh, in altitude in the altitude as indicated is correct. Sorry, uh, trying to get my computers working at the same time here. This is fun, isn't it? And let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Now, did I lose my flight plan? That's a potential. All right, so I am off a little bit here, so I'm gonna do a little bank and checking, making sure airspeed is still good. Um, I did drop about 500 feet there as I was busy messing with my computer, but that is okay. One thing about Microsoft Flight Simulator is when you're using the mouse, it st stops. <laughs> responding to your flight controls which i'm sure is a setting that i could disable i just haven't gone in to find it yet i'm gonna climb back up to three thousand 500 and give a wide berth here to Cherry Point since we are overflying their airspace we need to be well above their designated airspace which I'm going to put up on screen here in just a moment for you all also the field that we're going to be landing at is going to be a grass um, grass field so that's going to be a slightly different landing procedure and I will show you guys the airport it's called Dead Cow Field I believe uh, that I will be landing at it's a very short flight but it'll be a slightly different landing procedure and had my radio not come back on I would have just flown and landed at that location if, if I could have found one that you know was an uncontrolled airport with the services such as like maintenance or something that would have that'd be nice but for the most part a, a controlled uh, airport is going to or excuse me a airport that has ground services like an FBO is going to be a controlled airport all right so we are approaching flight level and we now want to level off and let's get my trimming correct All right, so now we would be doing the cruise phase of my checklist. So that cruise phase, if my airplane will please stop climbing to get you to 2,200 RPMs and keep you there. All right, there we go. So cruise uh, RPMs is set to 2,200 RPMs. Uh, trim, adjust, mixture, lean, and landing lights are off. That is not me. And these computers are pretty wonderful. Yeah, there we go. And we're going to do direct. There we go. And we're going to confirm. There we are. And that will tell me what heading I need to fly in order to make it to our destination.
Oh, nice. <laughs> And considering we've climbed an altitude, we're about 200 feet above our designated uh, altitude, we can start to begin our descent. So we would obtain weather information if this airport had it. It does not. And altimeter set, mixture adjust for smooth operation, which is going to be rich. Power and to see if we can establish about a 500 foot per minute descent. Oftentimes, when flying into an uncontrolled airport, you would want to announce, so we're approximately 10 miles out. This would be a good time for me to announce that I intend to enter into Dead Cow Fields traffic and just you know, give any airmen that may be on the ground or maybe in the vicinity the ability to know that I'm in the area and also to give them the opportunity to get on the radio to let me know if they were about to take off or if somebody else was in the vicinity. Flight following, if people choose to use it, it can be also helpful. They'll advise you of traffic and let you know when other aircraft are around, but it is not a requirement. So a VFR pilot could be flying with no flight following and hopefully just listening to the correct frequencies in order to maintain and be aware of uh, aircraft in the vicinity on the radios. This is also why VFR is so important, right? So we kind of always want to keep our eyes outside. We don't want to just hone in on one thing, even when we're having a technical problem, because we still have to maintain situational awareness and not allow ourselves to get behind the aircraft. Getting behind the aircraft just means basically what it sounds like. Uh, your workload or something has distracted you to the point that mentally you are not where the airplane is and you are ha have to kind of play catch up and that's not a good thing. So, for example, if I found myself three miles away from the runway uh, and I was still up at 3,500, that would would indicate that uh, I'd gotten behind the airplane. My mind wasn't where it should be and I would have to take steps in order to descend uh, in a controlled manner and get down to a better altitude for observing the field before landing at this field. Then I would probably do an announcement here at about eight miles as well. I would just let the vicinity know that I am eight miles south of Dead Cow Field with the intention of a full stop landing. There. Let's give a reason to have some lights on, right? So I'm gonna turn my nav and my strobe lights on. And as we get a little closer, I will turn my landing lights on. Actually, you know, I can turn them on now. Why not? A little extra visibility won't hurt anything. Zero five November Charlie traffic Cessna seven tree tree uniform Foxtrot seven miles northwest 2100 feet inbound to land runway two eight. All right, so hopefully you heard the intention there and my position, and the game's kind enough to give me a nice little box to enter for the pattern. And next I'm going to announce when I'm on the downwind leg. Still monitoring my descent rate, monitoring my airspeed, and... Making sure my engine instruments are good. I seem to have resolved the issue that caused the electrical system to completely glitch out. But uh, to be quite honest, uh, I have no problem with that failure occurring because as pilots, we have to be prepared for that. S still have to fly the airplane, uh, navigate, a aviate, no, excuse me, aviate, navigate, and communicate. Aviate, navigate, and communicate. Those are the critical things. So first we fly the airplane, then we 
make sure that we are navigating, we know where we are and we know where we're going, and then communicate. Had there been a catastrophic failure, I would squawk the appropriate code that would say that I, my radios were out and proceed to an airport to land. Also, here we can go into our descent checklist, and this aircraft does not need to use carb heat, but I would also probably pull carb heat out as well. Landing lights on, and <clears throat> seat belts and shoulder harnesses are secure, fuel selector valve on both. As you can see, we are already in the white arc, meaning that I could deploy flaps at any time, but don't need to just yet. And I'm getting down to about pattern altitude here. Add just a smidge of power, there we go. Zero five November Charlie traffic Cessna seven tree tree uniform Foxtrot is on downwind runway two eight. Now, I'll probably flash up on the screen here the procedure. So you'll be looking at the Cessna uh, Pilot Operating Handbook. It shows you the distance needed to land on a runway and also the landing procedures for a soft field or short field landing. Because this is a grass runway, this would be a soft field landing. And... And just kind of take a look at that. Now, prior to taking this flight, one of the things that I checked was to check this particular um, runway and to make sure that the runway length was adequate for a Cessna 172 with my current weight and balance. You always want to factor in a bit of a safety margin. So, you know, if it was critical, I could, you know, potentially fly with uh, less fuel if I knew I wouldn't need, you know, full tanks generally speaking though, i'm always going to have the tanks topped off because in a cessna with only 40 gallons in each tank uh you're never going to regret having plenty of gas now this airport that we are flying over is one that i have personally flown over and i think it is one of the most beautiful airports here Let's see if i can show you guys here yeah, no, it's, it's, tell me I'm going too fast, but that is a wonderful runway, and uh, it does not have a wind sock. It has a wind triangle, which is not something that you see every day, um, but as I get uh, my solo hours in, I will probably do some touch and goes in this location, but as I've been talking, uh, I need to go ahead and start to begin getting the airplane prepared for landing so we are in the white arc so i'm gonna put some flaps in that's going to reduce my speed and it's interesting that microsoft says that i'm going too fast i mean six <clears throat> excuse me so it's interesting that microsoft says i'm going too fast because 65 or 70 knots is not too fast in the downwind leg if we were on final and i was coming in that fast yeah I, I would agree with that but with no wind i feel that 60 knots is i mean it's doable but it's on the lower end of what i would consider to be safe for the downwind leg 
basically, you know, 70 knots downwind, um, 75, let's say 65 to 70 on the base leg, which I am now going to turn to, so I'm going to announce. Zero 05 November Charlie traffic Cessna 7 tree tree uniform Foxtrot is on base runway 28. As you can see, I'm getting a little low, so I'm just going to add some throttle here. Anytime that you have flaps in, it requires more throttle to gain any type of altitude. And one thing that I found interesting on the short field landing is that it recommends full flaps and then taking the flaps out as you land. When you remove flaps, the aircraft is going to have a desire to pitch down and when I add flaps like I am right now it's gonna have a desire to pitch up so you want to adjust the yoke to counter that pitching of the aircraft all right so and full flaps my stall speed is about 40 knots whereas without flaps the stall speed is a bit higher and you can see I'm at 60 knots right now with a, about a 300 foot per minute descent and Microsoft Flight Simulator seems to like those speeds, even though I'm getting a little slow. In slow flight, put the next notch of flaps in, um, pitch controls your airspeed. So when I pitch up, it slows me down. When I pitch down, it's going to build that speed back up. Um, whereas throttle kind of controls your rate of descent. So it's a little different in slow flight than in, in just normal straight and level flight. All right, and... So as you saw there, the airspeed dropped a good amount, so I went ahead and put a lot of throttle in and got the nose back down and because I don't see my runway yet and I'm over a populated area I all right there's my runway all right there's that grass strip so I'm gonna go ahead and kill my throttle and pull the nose up I kind of doubt that Microsoft Flight Sim is going to give me uh, we don't want to stall alright here we go alright let's just get this down alright and so yeah there we go as you can see there's another airplane and because of my workload I did not announce that I was on final mostly because I was talking to you all hope you guys won't uh, hold that against me but I will get clear of the runway here and Zero 05 November Charlie traffic Cessna 7 tree tree uniform Foxtrot is clear of the runway all right so Take a moment here to just kind of look around. Actually, you know what? Let me set my parking brake. And take a little moment here to just look around. Interesting name for a grass runway. Dead Cow Field. I'm sure there's a story behind that. And awesome. So, engine off procedure. And then I will wrap up this video. So... After landing, flaps up, which we did during the landing phase, car peak cold, mixture uh, for taxi, uh, transponder on, landing lights off. So there we go. Got my taxi lights on now. All right. And avionics off, electrical equipment off, and then mixture set to idle. So let's kill the strobes, kill the nav, and 